The beading attachment comes in two parts. Number one is the presser foot that has a little groove on the right side that allows your beads to go underneath without piling up. Then we have the guide that mounts to the front of the machine and I will show you how to do that momentarily. You can actually take pretty much anything you want as long as it fits, as it fits it within the parameters of the groove on the top of the guide. So you can use beads, uh, piping, cording, fabric, wire, pretty much anything that you'd like to as long as it fits it within the, the parameters of that area. But before I attach the guide, I want to adjust the tensions on my machine. My left needle tension will be on zero. By placing it on zero, it creates a little loop with the material underneath. Like if you were working with your regular sewing machine and you had no tension, you'd have the loops on the underside. Our right needle, or our second needle, we don't use at all. Just for uh, this application, we're only going to use the left needle. So the right needle is, we don't have to worry about that one. Our upper looper, which is the looper that weaves on the top of the fabric, we want to place it between two and five, depending on how large your beads, cording, etc. are. The lower looper, the looper that weaves on the underside of the fabric, we want to tighten. What it does is it takes that needle thread that's loose and brings it up to the side so it's not really just dangling. Okay, once our tensions are set, uh, I want to adjust my stitch length to the length of my beads. If you were working with three millimeter beads, you would put your stitch length on three millimeters. If you're working with four millimeter beads, four millimeters. And in this case, you see my stitch length is on five, so I will be using five millimeter beads. The differential will stay on normal because I'm gonna just use a woven material. However, if you're working with a stretchy fabric, you may want to go towards gather. This will eliminate the stretching. If you're working with a sheer fabric that wants to pucker, you may want to go to a stretch, which would be towards uh, 0.5. And then we are going to leave our, uh, our slider for our standard or rolled hem uh, tension on standard. Once I have the top of my machine set, I'm going to go ahead and open up the cover plates. Then I want to lower my blade, so I'm going to push it to the right and dial it down to disengage it. Then I want to retract my stitch finger. Take both of these dials on the left hand side, or actually you can just take the one in the front, push it to the right, and take your stitch finger and move it from standard to rolled hem. On the front of the machine is a little screw. I want to loosen that up because that's where my pearl guide attaches making sure you have it on all the way so it's flush with the right side of the machine. And then tighten and close your cover plates. Once I have my machine set up according to the instructions on the beading attachment set, I'm going to go ahead and take my beads and place it under the foot and through the groove in the guide. And I'm going to take my material and butt it right up against that guide. So whether you're doing crafts, home decorator, uh, edgings, anything you want to add a little embellishment to or a nice edging, you would go ahead and use this foot. Now I'm also helping the beads go through just by guiding them. This will keep them from putting a lot of weight on the material, creating a little pucker effect because of the weight of the beads. Now if you've ever used your um, machine as a flat lock, the settings I did are very similar to that, so by loosening the needle, that will allow me to take and open up my material. Um, if I want to just use it as an edging, I can do that as well. If I want to use it in the center of my fabric, there it is. So by loosening up the needle tension, that will allow you to take your fabric and open it up to create a great little bead embellishment.